What's up, everybody? Today's a very special day. In our Small Builder series, we're taking a first look at this custom Manzanita Cycles frame that Nick built for me. This year, I started the Small Builder series where we focus on small frame builders. And Nick is a one-man operation, and he built this whole frame out of raw materials. And today, we're going to pick his brain, learn about the thought and detail that went into this, build it up, weigh it, take a first look, and then we'll go take it out on the trails and ride it later on. So Nick, you built this thing. You know it better than I do. Walk us through it a little bit. Okay, well, the uh, the rear triangle can fit a 29 by 2.6 with 420 mil chain stays. Yes. So nice and tucked, the way Steve likes it. Uh, we have, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we have a curved C-tube to clear the tire and to hopefully get Steve on a 175 mil dropper post. Like all my bikes, this is a mix of tubing brands. We have some a bit of Reynolds, a bit of Verwall, uh, maybe Kasai, I can't remember, and some 4130 that I bend in-house awesome. for each bike. So it's a completely steel chromoly frame. This thing came in super light at 5.21 pounds with the engine cycles, which is too cool, clamp, with the headset, with the cable, and with the axle. So without that, it came in around under five pounds, right? Just the frame. That's significant. It's really cool to see how these custom builders can get steel frames super light, and they can get them to ride perfect for that rider. He knows I'm not sending 40-foot hucks. He knows I don't weigh 300 pounds, and so he doesn't have to overbuild this thing, which should make for a nice, lively, supple ride that doesn't beat me up, but I'm not worried about braking either. I hope so, yeah. Awesome. And are you a TIG welder or are you a brazer? I'm learning to TIG, but I currently braze all my bikes. It's just as strong as TIG for bike frame manufacturing. Uh, it's been done for decades. Uh, it's a great way to build a frame. Uh, just a little bit more time consuming than TIG welding. Nick, this paint's rad. It looks like it's glowing. It looks like it has lights on it. We partnered with Technar for this. Tell us a little more about that. So I gave Technar the idea of Reno at night. Since I live in Reno and there's a lot of casinos, a lot of neon lights still around Reno, I wanted to have that kind of Reno at night vibe to it. And I let Technar just go wild with the wild style that he normally has. <laughs> he did a great job. It's really cool. All right, we've got a dropper in it. We've got the three pack here and a three pack here. I love that because when bike packing, I put really heavy loads down there. What a classic looking frame. You did a great job. I just, I love the straight tubes. Personally, I know a lot of you out there love the straight line from the head tube to the dropout. I actually prefer there to be some distinction between the rear triangle and front triangle. But man, this looks beautiful. So tell me what you've done here. Uh, so those are externally brazed on uh, bolts. And then you just have nuts that bolt on there to hold your water bottle. That way the, a long dropper post can be inserted behind these uh, so awesome. you can run a long dropper post. Awesome, love that idea. We got a threaded bottom bracket, standard BSA thread. Let's throw some tires in to see how big of tires we can fit in here with the clearance. Right. Poor Nick, he's got to sit here while I like scrutinize his bike in front of him, but uh, this will be fun to see. Here's a 29 by 28 on a 40 i rim. It's not designed for this. And that's why we're doing it, just to see. 420 on a 2.8 is crazy. Nobody's doing that. Ooh, that dropout feels nice. Zero rubbing, zero clearance. I don't recommend it, but no rubbing. Let's check it out. It's hard to tell because these tires are big. We probably got two mil clearance over there, two mil up top, and two mil over here. So it's technically not rubbing. I wouldn't recommend that. You corner hard, that will rub, but that's awesome. That means 2.6 definitely fits. Nice job. Nice job, Nick. Thanks. We got it built up with some cool parts. We're running E-Wings on here, which are a little bit stiff for a hardtail. We're running a Fox Stepcast 34. This is built around a 120 mil fork, just like your personal bike. Yep. That is the sweet spot, 120 to 130 for me. And the final build came in at 28.6 pounds. Now we have... Heavy brakes on here. These clampers are like a pound and a half for both of them. We've got heavy tires, heavy wheels. Um, still, that came in a lot lighter than most of my bikes on here. We're running the Stanton tie bars. We are running a 9.8 stout stem, running 200 mil rotor in the front, 180 in the rear, 
165 mil E-wings, titanium cranks. We're running a 32 tooth absolute black oval with micro shift advent X drivetrain. We fit the fall line 175 in there. It totally fits even with a super tall saddle. Nice work. That was not easy. I gave him some really tough parameters. Why don't you talk about that? What was the hardest part about building this bike? Well, uh, Steve has pretty short legs for his height, so it's hard to get a long dropper like he likes. The 175 mil dropper, it goes all the way down to just before the curve in the C-tube. So I had to make sure that in the design, I was putting this curve as low as possible and having this straight section as long as possible to accommodate such a large, a long dropper yeah. for Steve's height. Killer. Um, what's the hardest kind of bike to make? Road, gravel, hardtail? Hardtail's up there. Probably the monster cross bikes that people like when they want the road Q factor, but then the large tires. Yeah. So you have to cram a bunch in around this area with the chain ring and the large tire. That's the biggest challenge. Hardtails are up there, especially something like this that Steve wanted uh, the run 29 by 2.6. So we were able to accommodate that with four and 20 mil chain stays. That's really tough. Um, that's, that's how I measure if a builder's worth their salt is I throw that at them and they they either say, nope, impossible, or they say impossible, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> and you did it. You crushed it. We have two threes on here, but I wanted two sixes because I feel like it bike packs real well with two sixes. And with the triple boss under here, um, we've got the triple in here, the double here. This would be a fantastic bike packer based on the geo. We'll have to see how it rides, but that was my idea is let's make this as versatile as possible. And that's what's great about hardtails is you could run it with two, two XC tires and have a super light steel XC bike that's just comfortable with modern geo and just crushes it. Or you could build this thing up to be super rowdy with a big 120 fork and and uh, ride this thing pretty hard and or you could bike pack it or you could commute on it and i think a hardtail should be versatile walk us through some of the unique things on this bike that you wouldn't see on a bike made in taiwan oh okay well um let's see i designed the <laughs> the brake mounts for the back here yeah in uh, fusion 360 and had them laser cut in reno so those are usa made Sweet. uh brake mounts for the rear You've got a super light head tube on here. Super light head tube made by Paragon Machine Works in Richmond, California. You've got unique tube selection too. And that's not just because Nick's like, oh, I can't find any tubes. I'll just take whatever's laying around. Right. You put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, each tube has a purpose for every bike I make. And so I'll, especially the down and top tubes, I'll make sure that those fit the spec for what the rider wants and the, the just the ride characteristics uh, rider age and weight and riding style and riding ability and just you know dial it in so the rider is super happy and it feels great under his or her legs a huge part of building custom bikes is working with the customer talk us through that process if someone wants one of these what's the process like because working with a custom builder is totally different than just ordering on chain reaction and it shows up a week later at your door true yeah so we'll start with just a conversation about what the customer is looking for and uh, I'll have in the back of my head kind of these ideas of what tubes will work for the customer's age, weight, riding style. Uh, we'll talk about fit, and I usually recommend that a customer get custom fitted ahead of time by a professional fitter. Or if they have a bike they are already comfortable on that fits them well, we can just use that as a starting point. And from there, uh, we'll work on the design in BikeCAD, and uh, then I'll come up with all the tube diameters that I'll need yeah, just get everything ready, all the raw materials ready and collected. So once they arrive, I'm just ready to start building the frame. And once that's done, I send it out to paint or powder coat, depending on the customer's taste. So when it comes back from paint, then I'll uh, ream and face the head tube, uh, chase and face the bottom bracket, and ream the C-tube, and then I'll be ready to, for building. And I'm happy to build up the bike, or if the customer wants, I can just send them the frame as is. Awesome. Awesome. And the communication process has been great. I had a picture of this in BikeCAD Pro that we agreed on the angles and everything before. So nothing surprised me. But when you do work with a custom builder, you're going to need to take some measurements of your body, communicate well with him. And if you have questions, you're also getting consultation with Nick. But it's a different process than just ordering online and having it show up in a week. And I actually love the process. I loved chatting. I loved getting his take on how we could design this and learning from his experience. 
And a lot of these great designs were his ideas that really came together. And some of the geo was my idea and it was a real partnership to build this. And that's what's really cool about a unique frame. And I think that's what you're paying for is a frame that's specialized for you. And I can't find a production frame that's this light that runs this thin of tubing with these angles because most companies have to build it for someone 300 pounds who's gonna huck it off a roof because they don't want a warranty issue. With our conversation, Nick understand what I was going for and that I'm not gonna be hucking it off a roof and that I want a supple ride so, and how I'm gonna use it. So he built it exactly for me. And because of that, it takes a lot of human hours in this, it takes a lot of experience. Uh, it's built in the United States by this is your full-time job Yes. by a passionate person mm -hmm. and you don't get the same price as you do when a robot's welding them a thousand at a time in Asia. If you're a bike nerd like me and you really want something unique and something special and a bike that you're going to have for years to come and you, or you're frustrated that nothing on the market exists for what you're looking for, going with a custom builder like this is so rewarding. It's so nerdy. It's so much fun and I'm so thrilled with this final product. This thing's beautiful. When this review's over, I strip all the parts off and I'm gonna give Nick the frame back and he is going to sell it and donate the proceeds to charities. So if you want this exact frame, stay tuned for the ride review. In there, I'm gonna add a link to the for sale link to this where we can donate the proceeds to a good cause. Super awesome of you for doing this. Before we wrap it up, we gotta throw this thing on the geometer and see what the actual geometry looks like. Chain stay length is 421. Rear center is 418. And these are plus or minus, I'm gonna say 5%. I can't get it perfect, but we're getting close. Reach is 448, spot on. Front center is 758. This thing has a tall stack, which I love. That was another thing I wanted. Nick's been real easy to work with. I'm not, I'm pretty demanding and uh, he was real easy to work with. Stack is 640, excellent. We've got a 62 mil bottom bracket drop, effective seat tube angle, 74.5, and head angle, 65.1. Nice job, your geo chart was spot on. That never happens because real world is not CAD, but man, nicely done. Thanks. There are some things I really love about this. I love the ovalized top tube. I love the clean routing that it's all underneath the top tube. The single input port for the dropper comes in. It stays in through here. I love the space for the 175 mil dropper. I love the geo. I love how light this frame came in. I love the small tubes. It just looks absolutely stunning. I love that he ran the posts on this so that I can run the full dropper and still fit bottles inside. I love the three pack and the three pack. This thing is just beautiful. I love the paint job. Technar did an amazing job. They have some really unique 90s flavored paint jobs. They fit the channel really well. Check them out on Instagram. And if you need a custom bike painted, hit them up. We appreciate them partnering with us for this project. What would I change about it? I would keep it and not be selling it to you guys. <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you, Nick, and I'm stoked to tell people about your awesome work. I've got links to all his socials and his website and all that in the description below. If you're interested in the review of this bike to see what it rides like, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.